Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the Faraday law of electrolysis and we're going to do a few questions to help us to understand this law of electrolysis. So first of all, when you look at the quantitative aspects of electrolysis, we have some basic terminologies and concepts. First of all, we remember we measure the amount of electricity passing through the wires. We place a voltmeter at the end. You notice that a lot in our electrolysis. The voltmeter usually uh, produce, um, uh, they measure the flow of uh, electrons. So Hampere is a standard unit used to measure an electric current and the flow of electrons, and it is usually ab abbreviated with amperes. So we are going to use this abbreviation a lot in our calculations. And then Coulomb is a quantity of electricity when one current of ampere flows for one second. So you notice when it comes to times, we are going to be using units in seconds. So you have to remember to do the conversion and make sure they are in seconds, even if they have been given in hours or minutes. So when you look at the quantity of electricity, it's the same as taking the, the current times uh, time. So generally, quantity is the same as current times time, and current is in amperes, times is in second. So that is a formula. So where Q is the quantity of electricity in columns, and I is the amperes, that is the current, and time is a second. And then now we have the Faraday law, which states that if the quantity of electricity produced by one mole, so we'll be working with one mole, and then we compare depending on what we have been produced in our reaction, and is usually a constant equivalent to 96,500 approximately. You always be told. If you're not told, we use 96,500 coulombs. So the Faraday law states that the mass of the substance liberated during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed. So there is that direct relationship between the deposits and the electricity that is passed. So I want you to remember these things, but you're going to use uh, these um, um, concepts that we have learned now to do some calculations. We're going to do them step by step so that you can be able to understand how to apply. So we'll start with this question, what mass of copper could be deposited on the cathode? So we are looking for the deposit when a steady current of one, pair, one ampere, so I is going to be one amp, and then flows for 30 uh, minutes, so the time is 30 minutes. This is the same as 30 times 60 to give us 1,800 seconds. Uh, through copper two sulfate solution. So we are depositing copper at the cathode. So it's copper ions that are being discharged at the cathode. So we have the um, atomic mass of copper, which is 63.5, and the Faraday constant you've been given is 96,487. So the first thing we'll do, we are going to calculate the quantity of electricity produced in this reaction first. So when you look at the quantity of electricity, it's going to be IT, that is the current times time. So the current is 1 times is 1800, which gives us 1800 coulombs. So next, we look at the Faraday uh, constant. So we said that one mole of electrons give 96,487 um, uh, moles uh, amount of electricity that is coulombs in one mole. So first of all, we need to identify how many moles of electrons were used up in our reaction were produced. So we said copper ions are discharged at the, elect at the cathode to give copper solid. So we are working with two moles of, el of electrons. So we say if one mole of electron produces 96,487 amount of electricity, what about two moles? So we will calculate that. So it's going to be two times 96,487, which gives us 19,000. Uh, two, 
so 192,3974. So these are the amount of elect electricity produced by two moles of electrons so remember when we talk about one mole we also we can relate this with the molar, molar mass so one mole of a substance re, uh, producing 63.5 grams of copper which is the same as 96 uh, 485 487 amount of electricity so these are the molar standard conditions of the faraday constant or the faraday law everything that ha when one mole of electrons produces the molar mass of that compound uh produces 96487 uh quantity of electricity so we we'll ask ourselves if now because our reaction we are producing two moles of electron so if two moles of electrons now which is if 192,974 amount of electricity deposits deposit 63.5 grams this is the standard condition this is what would happen in the standard way but the actual amount of electricity given off was 1800 would deposit how much so we are moving from what the standard would be like to what actual would produce so that is a big question this gives us uh, 1800 times 63.5 is equals to 192,974. So this will give us, if we divide, uh, it's going to give us 1800 times 63.5 divided by 192,974, which will give us 0 0.5. Nine two three grams. So that is the amount that would be deposited from this reaction. Let's do another question. So the, the question can come in any, any way. You can be asked to look for the quantity, the mass deposited, the current, the time. So it depends on the question. So what volume? So in this case, now we are working with gases. You remember that in our electrolysis, we noticed gases also can be produced when ions are discharged. So what volume of oxygen will be liberated? So still we are looking of, at the mass given off, but in this case is the volume. So you are looking at the volume given off at the anode when a current of three mm -hmm. amperes, so I is going to be three amperes, is passed through magnesium sulfate. So we are working with magnesium sulfate solution for 45 minutes time is going to be 45 minutes this is the same as 45 times 60 so 45 times 60 gives us 2700 seconds so if you were to get the quantity of electricity given off from this reaction it would be it which is the same as 3 times 2700 so if you look at 3 times 2700 it gives us 8100 uh, c that's the quantity of electricity so we have the molar gas volume so they have the volume of the gas produced at one mole so 24 liters will be produced um, one mole and the Faraday constant is 96,500. So the first thing we need to identify is the, the amount of electricity produced depending on the moles of electrons given off. And if we were to look at the oxygen liberated, it means the OH ions are being discharged at the anode. So in some situation, you need to know the equation for discharge so that you can know how many moles of electrons are given off. So we have four OH ions discharged to give two molecules of water plus oxygen gas plus four electrons now if one mole of electron produces 96,500 amount of electricity what about four moles so we we'll cross multiply so 96,500 times four will give us 86,000 Um, amount of electricity 
But now remember the molar gas volume. So in one mole, 24 liters is given up. So we will say if 24 liters of the gas uh, is given off, uh, produces 386,000 amount of electricity to be given off what about 90 what about 8100 which is the actual electricity used for this reaction would give up how much volume of the gas so you notice this as the standard conditions it's important you notice that but the actual amount of electricity used is 8100 so it becomes 24 times 8100 divided by 36 thousand this will give us so we forgot say 30 seconds that were produced as well it was 45 minutes and 30 seconds so that introduced that so it was 45 uh, minutes times 60 then plus 30 seconds so let's do that before we multiply times 3 so that we can make that correction so we have made the correction. So it's 8,190 clones. And then if we equate that and make the division, we get the volume that was given up is 0 0.5092 liters. So let's do one more question to end the session. So in an experiment to electrolyze copper two sulfate solution using copper electrodes, so 0 0.2 amperes so the current is 0 0.2 was passed through a solution for the time uh, is 1930 seconds and the mass of the copper cathode increased from 6.35 to 6.478 so mass deposited so we are going to what you're going to do, we are going to get the difference between the mass, the increase in the mass, which is uh, 6.47 uh, 6 minus 6.35 to get 0 0.128. So the mass that was deposited is going to be 0 0.128 grams. So we use that information to get the charge of the copper ion. So when we look at the, the whatever values you have been given, getting quantity is going to be I times time, which is the same as 0 0.2 times 1930, which gives us the quantity of electricity will be 86 Cs. And the constant values, so we know one Faraday is 96,500. And remember, we are, deposit, we are depositing copper. So it means the copper ions are gaining two electrons to form copper solid. So we are working with two electrons. Uh, so we have scraped off the equation is because you notice the question is find the charge of the copper ion. So we do not know how many electrons were given off uh, to produce the electricity that we got. So we are going to work from known to unknown. So we will say that if 386 amount of electricity gives a deposit 0 0.128 grams, what amount of electricity would deposit 64, which is the, uh, the standard mass that would be deposited? How much amount of electricity would be used for this reaction? So we will cross multiply, which becomes 386 times 64 divided by 0 0.128. So we are going to get 193,000 and we know one mole of electrons produces 96,500 uh, quantity of electricity so how many moles of electrons would they produce 193,000 amount of electricity so it becomes 1 times 193,000 divided by 96,000 500, which gives us the number of moles would be 2 moles. 
So that tells you the amount of electrons given off is 2. So the charge of copper ions will be 2 plus. So that brings us to the end. Make sure you practice a bit more. You can get more questions in the web in the website or the app after this and do a bit more practice. So see you in the next lesson as we look at something else.